training that was there for people who had recently been promoted. And I remember that training really distinctly. We were put into small groups and we were, we were actually invited to play at the level of, uh, that we had just been promoted into. And the whole week was a, a week long immersive experience and it was actually really wonderfully crafted. I'm really, really grateful for the opportunity to have gone through that program. Throughout the week, I've been getting, uh, we've been working in group settings and I've been getting some feedback around uh, some of the ways that the, that the way that I was in the group was creating some group cohesion and working with multiple uh, strong personalities to allow us to be able to create uh, a, a, our final product at the end. And the end deliverable, deliverable of this training was to go ahead and give a presentation in front of uh, a mock client. Well, my mock client ended up being the big boss, the person, the person who, is, who ran my practice uh, out of the New York City office. And it was, um, it was really great having him in the room. I was also working as an actuary at the time. And part of the presentation involved having some numbers. And typically, I'm the kind of person that when it comes to presentations and different things, I like to start things off, get people get people in the mood, you know, uh, or, or wrap things up and get them like inspired or hyped or ready to think about what the next steps are. But for this particular occasion, the way that, um, the way that the group assignments ended up going out, uh, I was as the actuary, as the numbers guy in the group, uh, I was to speak on the slide, the only slide that had any real numbers on it. Right. And there were only three numbers on it to, to, in the whole entire thing. I'm laughing because of just how much of a mess I made of that one slide with three numbers as the numbers guy. Well, what had happened was the night before, I saw some of my teammates practicing, one person in particular practicing for the presentation the next day. And I remember thinking to myself, I'm like, oh man, there's, there's way too much work. Like, we're just gonna get in there, we're gonna do our thing, we've worked so hard this week. It's gonna be simple, smooth, easy, and we're just gonna make it come to life. And I saw her, like, it was it was really great. I saw her, she was like, she was walking around, she was pacing, she was saying this, and then she was like, no, 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 that's not it. And then she'll scribble something out, and then she'll come back and she'll start pacing the other direction, and she'll say it out loud. And she was just working it, working it over and over in, in, in her mind. And she was really getting it right. Uh, so the next morning, I, I went to bed. I went to bed just feeling like ready. I went to bed feeling ready for this. And the next morning we came in and I saw, I don't know what happened. We came in, I was ready. I was, it was time to give the presentation. And what, what I saw was her notes. And it was just like, there was just so many different words written on it. And I heard her just like walk, like just going outside really quickly and just giving, um, just practicing it one more time. I remember feeling incredibly calm at that moment and just trying my hardest to remember the things that I was supposed to say. It's like, there's only three things there. I'm like, what, are the, what is it exactly that I want to say? How do I want to say this? What's, what's, what's the point? What's the, the way that I'm going to convey this? And I remember just thinking to myself, okay, three numbers, like just gotta remember these three things. And I was trying to think about the specific ties of how everything tied together. Well, the presentation started and uh, we had our mock client, my big boss, like, and I have to say this here, when I say my big boss, we were in a room full of people who were all throughout, who had all been promoted that year that were working in consulting. So there were people who were from all different organizations and divisions within uh, within the consultant practice so it just so happened that it was my <laughs> it was my boss that was in the room it just so happened that it was another actuary who was in the room another <laughs> numbers person too right so for everyone else it was just it was another person that was just sitting there uh, but for me it was it was my guy and I remember the, the presentation starting off and the, the person leading it off and kicking it off in just a wonderful way, just really setting up the stage for the excellence of the team. And then the person that I had seen practicing the night before went up next and she floored me. 
I can't, like, what I remember from this year, and again, it's so funny when I think back of my memories, I'm wondering how many of them, how much gets exaggerated in my mind, but the way that I experienced it was that she was able to come off and just speak at like a mile a minute and just get all these words brought out at a rapid fire pace in a in a manner that every single word she said just kept adding and compounding on top of the other it was so professional so buttoned up i was really really impressed and i also i'll be honest i got really intimidated i was like oh wait is this what this needs to sound like does it need to be like this professional and so and does it need to be this polished so seeing that that's what I had just I had recently come into to really see like okay this is the level that we're playing at I started changing my game plan and went into a a version of kind of consultant speak but not my like in my head consultant speak it was a mess let me just say this I had three numbers to talk about and I just I tried to embody that level of uh, professionalism and, and polish. I think that's really the word polish is more less than professionalism. It's more about polish. I try to embody that uh, level of polish and it stumbled over every single part of my presentation, that one slide. And it was, for me, what I, what I know about myself is when I practice things and I have a specific like uh, conduit, a separate transition from one thing to the next, if I miss even one transition, then the whole thing's off because it's so smart. Like I'm making references to the references that I referenced that if I miss one of those references or I miss one of those transitions, the whole thing falls apart and I lose my, I lose my way. And that's what happened. It was, it was honestly a curse. It was laughable. And <laughs> it actually ended up being laughable because uh, we, we ended up wrapping up the presentation. The rest of the group came through, carried in strong. Um, and we got feedback from the mock client, my big boss. And he's like, this was a great presentation. And he gave all these, he gave all the feedback out to the team. And he just looked at me and I was going by the nickname Nemo at the time. And he said like, Nemo, what was that? And I felt it, I, like, I, I felt it in that moment. What did I feel? I felt embarrassment in that moment. Um, especially like, especially as someone who like was a numbers guy, um, I felt, shame and disappointment on behalf of my team like we had delivered a really strong presentation and i just fumbled my way through some of the mo most crucial parts of our analysis um i also felt i felt out of place you know i felt like wow for as strong as this week has been for all the work that, that we've done i just felt disappointed that i couldn't bring it all together and and showcase it in a way that it was meant to be that was the worst presentation of my life. And shortly afterwards, I ended up, it, it, made, me, it made me kind of aware, because what, what I realized was that I've had lots of presentations, and this one ended up falling apart because I was trying to be someone that I wasn't. I was trying to come off in this polished way, which is not the way that I actually connect with people. It's not the way that I actually am able to get my message across. And I came, uh, I was listening to a podcast, it's called Entrepreneur on Fire, and there was someone on there that was talking about uh, an assessment she had. It was called How the World Sees You by Sally Hogshead. I ended up taking that assessment because it, it talked about what is the way that you communicate so that you can be understood, so that you can connect, uh, so that, uh, that, that this really fascinates others about the way that you communicate. And what I found from that, I took the assessment and it changed my entire trajectory. It changed my life, actually. It's part of the reason why I'm right now making a live video um, to share this story. Because when I, found, when I took the assessment, what I found is that my personality type, not my personality type, my presentation type, the way that others, what, I, what fascinates me, my fascination archetype, uh, was that of the maverick leader. One who leads through innovation and creativity, and follows that up with power and confidence. And since then, I've been really honing in on what that looks like for me. The Maverick Leader is irreverent. He's able to come up with uh, new ideas and, and really pi like, takes pioneering ideas and is able to bring that out into the world. 
Like that's the place that I play, and that's the space that that I most fascinate on. And I've been honing that over the last, I guess, over ten years now, something like that. Um, no, not that long. Maybe maybe like six years. So it's only been six years that I've that I've had it. Uh, but over the last six years, I've been honing that and finding myself in positions, and actually specifically positioning myself in positions where the maverick leader, uh, uh, the creative, innovative, energetic elements are appreciated. I usually do start and end presentations now, and I find people on my teams who are really great at, who are really fascinated in their way of delivering details, who are really fascinated in the way that they deliver uh, numbers and so on and so forth. I get them to take care of some of the other elements of it all. And what that's done is allowed, it's helped me free up my time and also increase my impact in the way that I go about sharing things. And as I mentioned, you're watching this right now as a video. And it's a video that I didn't have scripted and still I'm sharing. And the impact of that is that, of this, of that worst presentation and finding out more about the Maverick leaders that like I choose to come out and share with you in a way that most people won't with messages that most people wouldn't share because that's what the maverick leader does and quite frankly it's it's the thing that comes most naturally to me and and it's also the thing that most people uh, are able to, to to jive with so it's a win-win on all around i think oh, more than anything else here the question i would ask you here is in what areas are you showing up in your life where you're comparing yourself to someone else and putting on a way of being, a way of operating that just doesn't really serve you. That's been one of my bigger lessons and bigger journeys that I continue to go through. And now I am, I'm in a place where I am working with others to help them find more about their own unique way, the way that most, that most accentuates what they do naturally. And also take some even further. I can realize as we're talking here, I can feel myself getting nervous and I'm stumbling over my words once again. Uh, right now what's happening is that uh, I'm gonna let you know about two programs that I'm, I'm launching and I can feel myself feeling um, a little unsure about how I wanna do it and also putting myself in like, what's the right way to share this here? So let me just, let me put that out here. Let me share that with you, let you know that that's what's happening in, inside here and then continue on from here. So, I do have two programs that I'm really proud of that to, to be bringing to, to the world. And it really stems off of that feeling of, of, of being the Maverick leader and in two different ways. The first program is called Unapologetically You. And in this program, we really work on you yourself and how you show up in the world. It really is about, it's an opportunity for you to really own your story, to really get clear on your values uh, and to really get to know who you are again. And to be able to do this, one of the biggest things that happen for people that are going through this program is that as a result of this, it's not just the knowing of it, but uh, of who you are and not just re rediscovering who you are, but it's actually going out into the world as you. This whole thing is a, it's a community of practice, is a program of practice where, we're a lot, where each member is going through and really gets a chance to be themselves and see some of the positive benefits that they get as them. A lot of people I work with, they, we, have, we suffer from imposter syndrome. We suffer from ways that even though it looks like we're successful on the outside, we ourselves on the inside have all these stories that we tell ourselves. And the number of us feel that the only way that we can be successful is if we're not ourselves. To one degree or another, if we're more like someone else, if we're more like the status quo, if we just blend in, if we don't stick out, if we just so on and so forth. And we've gotten to a place where we've almost lost who we are in the midst of it. And on the surface, on like what everyone sees is success after success after success. But what they don't see is that underneath all that external success is internal lack of fulfillment. And so this is a program for people who are looking to be fulfilled once again for being who they are and who are willing to take on, let's be real, it's, it can be scary and it can feel incredibly risky to be in your workplace, to be in your business, to be in your life and family as you. It's like it challenges whether or not you'll actually belong there. 
when you choose to no longer fit in, or in my case, fit out, and you choose to belong, it puts things at risk. And I get that, I know that viscerally, I know that firsthand. So we've created Unapologetically You for you to have a container to understand more about yourself, get more to the core of it, and to be able to go out into the world and practice it from day one. To be more you from day one and have the entire experience really just help you align more with who you are. That alignment part is really big because it leads into the second program that we have, which is the Trailblazer Oasis. And the Trailblazer Oasis is for those people who have found alignment and are showing up in the world very much at this point. They're visible in different ways. They, they have um, a movement under them. They have a, a, a change that they're looking to make in the world. The way that I look at a trailblazer is someone who is willing to take the things that make them different, the different way that they see the world, the different way that they, um, that they the different skills that they have, the different talents that they have, and the different visions that they have. And rather than just maximizing it for themselves, they're willing to do the hard work of creating and carving out a new path for people where one doesn't exist already. And these group, this, these trailblazers typically have to go through a wilderness where they have to go and carve that path out themselves. They're being, they're, they're dealing with all the challenges that come with it, the attacks that come their way, the, 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 the repeated strength, the tiring, the tiredness, I think is what I'll say. The, the lack of energy from having to constantly cut a new path for yourself, but they're doing it. And they're doing it on behalf of other people. They are leaders who are either stepping into their leadership or have already stepped into their leadership. And they're looking for ways to not have to do it alone anymore. What I found is that as a trailblazer, we're all on our, on our own separate paths. Every once in a while, we're able to find others who want to come down that path with us and help us blaze that trail. And other times, it's just really, really important to know that you aren't the only one who's out there creating a new path in a, in a world that feels more dangerous than it needs to. So in the Trailblazer Oasis, we call it an oasis because you're, we get that the wilderness that you have to traverse. We get the, the harsh conditions of everyday life in order, in order to create what it is that you're creating. And in this oasis, you get a chance to, to actually be supported in a way where you can be rejuvenated, to be supported in a way where you can explore more of your own thought leadership. I know I've had a, a challenge with that as a thought leader to really dive deeply into what it is that I'm really trying to convey. And one of the things that we do in the, the Trailblazer Oasis is that we have thought partners and we take time to help you develop and, and tease out more and more of your own mission and your own message. This is a place for people who are really ready to step into their next level of visibility and are looking to bring it with it a powerful presence to bring to own their their story in a way that it can move others and really be able to operate in their world from a place of true leadership as themselves. I've also seen the, the, the trailblazers in, in this this program also include people who are working in like corporate environments who might have a vision of a culture um, or a vision of, of a project or something else that is really just like not, it, does, it may not feel safe to bring out in your organization. And they're looking for a way to really make that impact as them and to take, to, to, to lead others with it as well. So the people on this oasis are coming in for different reasons, but what unites us is the fact that we are different minded, like-hearted people who are looking to make the world a better place through our leadership, through our message, and through the unique way that we see the world. And with all that, we all come together to work on the skill sets that are involved with making that come to life and working on the deep inner work that allows us to be that pillar and be visible in this way for so many others. So, that's a trailblazer oasis. I'm incredibly excited about that. I would say if, if uh, Unapologetically You is probably about learning more about how, like being an outlier pioneer maverick and taking that to the maximum level within that range. And the trailblazer is saying, given that you're an outlier, a pioneer or a maverick, how can we use that to make, to leverage that into an, a positive impact in the world, in your world? How can we make that a part of your leadership and have you grow and take other people through that process um, through whatever your process is as a, as a result. 
this is for mission oriented uh, leaders who are out there making a difference in the world. This is for change makers um, and and really leveraging this on behalf of others. Unapologetically you is more for yourself. It's more about your own personal journey and in it will include your leadership, but it isn't with the specific intent of you going forth and bringing things out. Some of the things, it, that that's an important distinction. Different people are in different places and ultimately I find that I find myself working in these two buckets overall, all right? So if you're interested in being a part of the Unapologetically You program, which starts in January, or you're interested in being a part of the Trailblazer Oasis program, or you're just curious about more of them. Like, I can talk about this from a high level perspective, but to be honest, this is not, a, neither of these programs are programs you can just pay your way into. Each of them, I'm curating a small group for each of them. There's 10 people in each of the different programs. And so I spend time with each of you to see what is the impact that you're looking to create in your life and beyond for yourself and for others. And through that, we are able to figure out what's the best next path for you um, and what's the best way that I can support you. So if this is of any interest to you, send me a message. Send me, uh, just go into my direct messages and send me a message and let me know uh, that you're interested or that you're at least curious. And if that's the case, we'll go ahead, we'll organize some time. I'll send you some, I'll send you some more information and we can just decide if we wanna continue together from there. I'm so proud of these projects here because I feel this is what the last two years have been working toward. And really in owning who I am more and more, I've realized like this is the impact that I make in the world. And the game for me, you're seeing it right here. This is what happens. I'm now playing the game of what happens after I fully own all of who I am. And I'm now taking this to trailblaze even further. So I invite you to come on this journey with me. I am looking for 10 peers to play these games with and to make our impact together as we create a world that is more collaborative, more inclusive, and more empowered than ever before. It's our time right now. I'm looking forward to continuing this with you. Talk to you soon. My name is Niyama Ashan. I'm a champion of outliers, pioneers, and mavericks, and the trailblazing leader of the World Joy Movement. Be more you every day, because you are a gift to this world, and we need it. Game on.